Hello and welcome to Art with Miss Heather. It's great to be back with you. Today's project, we're going to do some art using found things, things that we find out and about. Today's project is going to be rock painting and we're going to use rocks. These rocks are rocks that I've found in my neighborhood. You can find these things in your backyard, as you're out on walks, on trails, parks, wherever you may be. Keep an eye out for rocks and you can start a collection so that you might have a rock box ready to go. The type of rocks you're looking for that make ideal rock painting rocks are ones like these, where they're not too big and not too small, they're nice and smooth, clean, and easy to pick up and take home with you. So always keep your eye out for rocks. When you're looking for rocks, you wanna look for rocks that look something like this. You wanna try and find rocks that are smooth, not too many little holes or pits in them. You wanna find rocks that are a good size, so maybe the size of your palm. If they're too heavy, it just becomes too hard to work with. And little ones are fine too. Um, just keep in mind what you wanna paint on them. You might need a bigger one for more space. So a great idea is to start a rock collection. When you're out and about or in your backyard, start looking for rocks that you can gather and collect and paint because you might find that it's so much fun to paint these. You might wanna paint more than just one or do a group painting project where you all sit around and paint rocks together. It's super fun. Okay. Let's get started. Let's gather the things we're gonna need for this project so you're all ready to go. The first thing you're gonna need is something to clean up with. So a napkin or a paper towel works great. And we're gonna use paint brushes. You're gonna want some medium sized paint brushes, some bigger ones, and a foam brush if you've got a big rock to paint. This just makes it go quicker and allows for a smooth coating of paint. The other thing you're gonna want, or you might want, is you can use Q-tips. Those are great for doing detail work. And when you're using your paintbrushes, keep in mind that the bottom of the paintbrush, the end of, other end of it, not the brush end, is really great for also doing detail work. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the next thing you're gonna need is a palette. You can use one like this if you happen to already have one, or, a takeout container lid works fantastic, or a paper plate that's disposable. These you can just wash and reuse. You're going to need a bit of water for cleaning your brushes, a cloth for cleaning your rock, and paint. So choose your paint, whatever you happen to have, or something that goes with your design. The other thing that you can use, it's not mandatory, is some sort of a coating. I happen to have a spray coating. This one is a Krylon Clear Glaze, triple thick. This one I picked up at the hardware store or craft store. Um, it's for a few dollars, but it does a really nice job of giving a nice gloss finish. And it also helps protect your rocks from the sun and from fading over time. So this is an option, it's not mandatory though. So don't worry if you don't have that. All right, let's get started painting. So the first step is to make sure that our canvas, which is our rock, is nice and clean and ready to go for painting. What you wanna do is you wanna take your cloth, your water and your rock, dip your cloth into the water, squeeze it out a bit and start wiping it down. If you've got little bits on there, see if you can get those off. Scrubbing, a little bit of elbow grease. Sometimes it's just part of the rock and that's okay. So you wanna wash both sides really well. And it's a good idea if you're gonna paint multiple rocks to wash a whole bunch at the same time so that you're ready to go. And once it's washed and all the dust and dirt taken off of it, just set it aside to air dry. They'll be dry in about five, 10 minutes. While they're drying, we're gonna plan out our design. The next thing we're gonna do is plan out our design. Anything we're making involves a little bit of planning, a lot of inspiration and creativity. 
but it's important to do the planning part because that helps us in the end. It helps us come up with something that we're happy with. Um, it helps us think about different ideas and sort of plan ahead. Um, it's important to do. So in order to plan for these rock paintings, what we're going to do is we're going to take our rock, nice and clean now, we're gonna take a sketchbook or a piece of paper and we're just gonna trace out the shape of the rock with a pencil. So all you do is place your rock down and just go around it roughly, doesn't have to be perfect, and that gives you an idea of what shape you want and your outline of your rock. So if you're not quite sure what to do for your rock, then there's lots of places to go for inspiration. The internet is a great place. There's lots of great ideas on Pinterest or rock collecting groups. Um, there's lots of great ideas around you. Just look around you, what inspires you? What, if, what do you wanna try doing? What's your favorite thing? Those are great ideas and great places to start when planning your art. All right, I've got my plan. Do you wanna see it? So it might be hard to see, but it's a rainbow and then there's some wording on it and it's gonna say we're all in this together. So just a tip about the wording, if you wanted to do any wording or any detail work, one of the things I've found is that markers also work really great. So if that's something you wanna do, you can paint it on certainly. Markers also work great and sometimes are a little bit easier to control. All right, I've got my plan, so let's get started. Okay, so step one, you wanna think about what kind of a base you want on your rock and if you wanna paint your whole rock or if you just wanna paint the face of it or the front of it, whatever part is gonna be sticking out, like this has just the face painted. You can always do the front part first and then let that dry and then finish the base and do the back as well. It's totally up to you. I've seen rocks that have a little design around them. Something like this is a great way to do it as well. Totally up to you, just depends on how much painting you wanna do. For my rock, I wanna do just the face of it. So I have some white paint here ready to go. And I'm going to take my sponge brush, it's dry. And I'm gonna use this brush to paint the face of this. So you just dip it into the paint and it easily goes on the rock. I'm going to go around the edges, just form a nice smooth edge with an even line. It's looking like it covers pretty good. This is acrylic paint. Use whatever paint you have and a thin coat is better than a super thick globby coat. And just go all the way around. Nice and smooth, there you go, step one. So I've got a couple coats of my base on, my white paint. And I wanted to give you a little bit of a pro tip. Something that makes this go a little bit faster, uh, especially if you're doing a few layers in a, different, a few different rocks, is your handy dandy craft hair dryer. This is an old hair dryer that you might have in your craft room. And this is great to use on the cool setting. So I just press in my button and turn it on and I'm able to dry the paint layers quicker and then I can get painting faster. So let's get drawing. The next step is to put our plan onto our rock using your pencil. All you do is you basically take a look at what you've already drawn and I want you to redraw it onto this rock. So what that does is it kind of gives us an idea of where things are gonna be spaced, how they're gonna look, if this is even working, Sometimes we have to take our plans back to the drawing board and that's okay. The great thing about writing on here is you have an eraser and the eraser will work on the acrylic paint pretty good. Sometimes there's a little bit of a residue left. If that's the case, you can just do another coat of paint over top or touch it up at the end. 
but planning it out is a great idea to have a it the, come out the way that you want it to. Another tip is on if you're doing any writing on your rock. Oftentimes with these rocks, we want to put cheery messages on them. The one I'm doing is going to say we're all in this together. So one of the ways to help with wording, if you're not too confident in how your wording looks or your writing looks, is to go online. There's tons of tutorials on how to do handwriting and maybe I'll do one later on. But you can take a look at different um, ways that you can do writing, different fonts, um, different lettering styles, if it's something you're interested in. You can practice on your sketch pad and get it looking the way you want it to. So the key with these is to make sure that it's bold, so easily able to read it, that the words aren't too tiny, because even though your rock isn't very big, you still want to be able to read what your message is going to be easily. Now I'm ready to start painting. I've got my base down, I've got my plan sketched out, I'm all ready to go. So all you do is pour your paint into your palette or your plate and you don't need a lot of paint to start off with. You need your paint brushes and I'm going to use my smallest brush to start with because it's a small area so I really don't need a big brush. So dip your brush into your paint. Start with your first color. Make sure your brush is dry. You don't need a wet brush first and then just take your brush and follow if you've drawn it out follow your lines and just do a smooth covering of paint I'm making a rainbow just paint your color down now you'll notice because you've got a white or if you've got a background that you're painting on it will probably look a little bit lighter than you want Two coats of paint are a good idea, especially with this acrylic paint. It'll just make the paint pop. I'm gonna take my rainbow color right to my edges. So all I'm doing at this point is filling in my colors. I've planned out my design so I know exactly what I wanna do. Just take your paintbrush, make sure you clean it in between your colors really well with your water, dry it with your paper towel because you don't want it to be wet and diluted, which is what happens when the paint gets too much water in it. And just paint in your design that you've already planned out. Don't worry about it being perfect on your first pass because you're probably going to do a second coat just to get a nice strong color. I'm at the part now where I'm all done painting my rainbow. As you can see, it's bright, cheery, and it's really coming together. I'm happy that I've planned all this out so I didn't have any um, surprises along the way. One of the things I'm deciding at this point though is I'm not loving this back background of white. I'm wondering if I have this really light pearlized blue so I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and change up my white background and just layer on some pearlized blue so that it's a little more um, interesting looking. So at any point you can always change up your design if it works within your plan. Uh, I've also had it where I've scrapped things all together and just painted over top of things and then started layering again. So really anything goes. It's good to have a plan. Plans sometimes change. It just depends on how it's working out. I'm ready to start the last stage of my art rock and that is the lettering. So what I'm going to use for this is a craft marker with a fine tip pen, a sharpie works great. These are designed to go on surfaces and stay. Not A washable marker will not work very well, especially if you put a coating over top it might bleed or run. So just make sure you're using a permanent marker, which is what I have here. And all I'm going to do is I can see my pencil letters that I've already written out. 
I've practiced in my sketch with how I want it to be. So I'm just gonna take my marker and gently go over my lines um, of my lettering and probably add a little bit of detail with my lettering so it's a little more interesting. So this just takes time and patience, something you don't wanna rush, wanna make sure that the lettering is easy to read, especially if it's something that we're gonna put out or hide somewhere so other people can find it. So I'm really happy how this lettering turned out. It's clean, easy to read, and bold looking, which is what I wanted. Now I'm thinking about decorating maybe the edge where the paint meets the edge of the rock, adding something there just to kind of finish it off a bit. I think what I'm gonna do is maybe some dot patterns. So the trick with this, while the lettering is drying, let it dry a good amount of time, is just to hold it on the edges like this. And to take your paintbrush, a great tool is the tip of the paintbrush, and this is fun to dip it in your paint and just to apply dots all the way around. I'm going to do a dot pattern. It's not going to be an exact rainbow pattern, but I'm going to go and do a bunch of different dots. And I can probably only do half of the rock at, the, at a time. And then you can pick up another paintbrush and do different colors to make your pattern. And it doesn't have to be perfect or totally the exact same pattern. My spacing is a little bit off. That's okay. When it's done, it'll look pretty sharp. Pick up another, and it's probably gonna look best if I use my brightest colors. Make sure you don't have too much on there because it ends up being too globby or the dots end up being too big. These dot patterns are a great way to add a detail to an edge. I'll take a close up picture and you can see how great it's turning out. Once you've done the outline and the outside of your rock, I have a really nice pattern here. I'm really happy with how it turned out. A good idea is to let it dry overnight. And then the very last thing you wanna do is put your coating on it. So you can use your spray paint coating or if you've got some Mod Podge, you can put that on. It doesn't matter what you're using or if you don't have a coating, you can uh, just have your rock like this if it's in indoors. If you're intending it for outdoors, it is a good idea to have a coating just to help protect it against the elements. So I'm just gonna give my rocks a really light spray and then um, let them dry. So all you wanna do is just shake your can and just give it a light spray. So it's got a coating on it and let it dry. I'm really happy how these turned out. It was so much fun painting these rocks. I think I might have to do a few more. Thanks so much for joining me and I can't wait to do some more crafting with you. So join me next time on Art with Miss Heather.